G'day and welcome back for more Space Engineer Survival. And we have to get a huge conveyor system done. Getting it from all the way down here down to our goose parking spots. And I reckon the first bit we should do is getting it linked up to some spot roughly underneath this point of the turntable. So the center of it. Since then it'll be easy to branch off to each of the parking spots. The angled spots are likely to be a bit of a hassle. Largely because I'll have to go left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, right, all the way into the corner. But I can't really see an easier way to do that. Unless I eventually make a branch off the conveyor system for this one. That goes off to each side. At least that part of it will be straight and relatively easy to drill out and set up. But at this point, I don't actually know that all of these other ones will even need conveyor hookups. So... That may not be something I need to worry about, actually. Oh, I get to use my properly designed entryway down into the conveyor system. Cool. I haven't actually used that before. Now, what should I do for this bit? I need to remember that that yellow bit, that's the roof of the grinder pit. So I don't want to drill down into there, which means I think I'm going to need to make a pathway all the way around. There we go. And now we keep on moving. Now, I've got to start thinking if there... Oh, went a bit crooked there. If there are any other bits that might be run into if I keep just drilling straight along in a line. Oh. Hello. Aren't you convenient? I've actually got the blueprint showing up. I'll make drilling this out much quicker. But i got to still think if there is anywhere that I might run into that could be a problem. I don't think there'll be a design issue if I run straight along into where the rotor for the turntable sits. Is it just... Yeah, here we go. I'm here anyway. Yeah, that shouldn't be a worry. I can just go underneath that. Cool. That was actually a lot easier than I thought it was going to be. Thanks to the blueprint there. Although, that appears to be one block off. Alright, I'm not sure how far I need to come along here, so I'm going to pop out of here. I wonder if I can get out through this way. Yeah, nice. Don't have to fly all the way back. And let's just pause it there. The way I normally like to record this series is to give myself a chance to read most of your comments before I record the next video. That stops me from doing stupid things two episodes in a row. However, this week was going to be very, very busy, so I had to record ahead of time. And that meant that I made a really dumb mistake twice. I completely forgot that all I would need to do to make this thing work, so that I didn't have to grind down the whole contraption, would be to place that there. Because rotors have attachment points on the sides. Splitsy, you're a dope. I can't believe I forgot to do that. But... What it did trigger me to think of, and that I'm going to do right now, even though for the rest of this video it's going to be left like this, because I'm inserting this out of temporal order, what I'm going to do is first unlock the goose, so that this doesn't go horribly, horribly wrong. Then, I'm actually going to grind down this whole thing, and I'm going to replace it with something that will allow me to get it centred, without having the angle off 90 degrees. And I cannot believe I didn't think of doing this earlier. What I am going to do is I am going to add a small head to this. The small head is going to allow me a lot more control over how far across I go into the hangar space because I can use the conveyor frame blocks. The other thing that I like about the idea of using this, and I just realized I placed these wrong for if I want to do that, is I can put some little detail work on this. If I use some conveyor junctions as the base, then at each corner, I'll be able to put small pieces of armor and other things on this so that it can look a bit more different than just a tube be kind of cool and I'm surprised I've never thought of doing this before. It may have had something to do with these sorts of contraptions having a habit to explode but 
I think this is going to look much more interesting. In fact, that's about centered anyway. If I just put the end here and then put the connector in, that'll be just about spot on. So that's the sort of thing I was thinking. We can use the small grid stuff, then I can take some armor blocks, and I'm not sure what sort of design work I'm going to do on this just now, but putting things, probably little lines that run up each side. I can do this in two different colors that way. I can do the whole thing in white and then have the yellow bits being the support stuff like I've got on the goose itself, which I think will look much better. So that's my idea for the connector now. I will start with the proper work on that next time so that we can work together on the design. But for now, we'll get back to me being a dope and doing this all the wrong way for the rest of the episode. Okay, so if I am going to put the advanced rotor here, I suppose I could just put it on the other side. It would work just as well. And it would save me having to grind that away now. That should be everything I need to link up. And that is a lot of pipe. I think I've said I've done a lot of pipe before, but this one really takes the cake. This is so much more than I did for the turrets. Oh, I'm going to jump ahead to when this is done because this is going to take me a while. Whenever I'm building these things, I am so grateful that Ikesta made these things colorable. It is so hard to tell if I've made them white or gray that they're actually constructed. Aha! Finished. Excellent. Now, can I access? Let's just make sure I've got everything... Yeah, it works. Woohoo. I might want to get out of here relatively quickly since my power is down to 8%. I'm not sure how exactly I would be able to get out of here if I did run out of power. Since it would be completely pitch dark down here. I, uh... Oh, I can probably go out this way. I don't know if I can actually walk the whole way and I don't know if I'd be walking the right way. If I started walking. Could be an interesting challenge if I end up getting stuck down there. I think we might use the buttercup to weld up the last bits. This is actually one of those times where the lights and the way they're aligned sort of might make sense this way. And I want to really think about how I've got them. I think it makes sense being forward and backward of the vehicle. Or at least it'll look best that way. And once I start... Once I finish off that connector, I have no need for this one in the hallway at all. Which is very, very exciting. That'll be our last temporary connector. Gone. <sighs> yes. That's the sort of thing that makes me feel like I'm making progress. Still not sure about whether I want this yellow, but... It Kind of looks okay, I think. Now I just have to set up the rotor and we are done. Oh, no, I need a timer, don't I? I need a timer for this so that I can remotely control it with the goose. I might want to put some sort of parking markings on the floor or something like that in the future to make it easier to line up for the connector. Let's set up our rotor displacement again. Minus zero point. Let's go with two. Yep light comes on and hopefully this connection will still persist when we're fully loaded up with ore which we will be checking out soon uh, what was I doing oh now I need to go down into the timer room and expand it a bit because I need another timer and this expansion is actually going to take me right over to the other wall so if I want to do any more I'll have to maybe do a little doubling back around this side could do that. Or I could just come up with another spot and put another room. Actually, that might be better because then I'll have another reason to have another set of stairs around here if I actually use up all of the potential space in here. It seems counterintuitive to be excited about that, but I like having a legitimacy to complications around my base. And by legitimacy, I mean a reasonable need for it. Not just a, 
I'm going to make this complex because I want to. I know I do that a lot, but I also like it to be for a specific reason as well. So I'll place down four more timers. Even though we only need one just now, I'm sure we'll find a use for, the, for it in the future. And this is going to be called base TB... Uh, hmm. What am I going to call this? Goose... Three? For the third parking position? Three dock? That's a very long name, but should work. Uh, set up actions. You are going to control the goose rotor parking dock thing and you're going to set reverse. And that's it. Everything else will be fine. Oh, since I expanded this, I'll need a bit more light in here too. Z lights hangar TB room one. There we go. Got our lights. <sighs> yeah. Does make me feel much better doing things this way. Okay. Now, what we need to do is set up the goose's control for this. And I might actually put this on hotbar 3 since that's got the other controls for the buttercup. And, oh, actually no. I should probably probably put it on a separate hotbar. So I have a hotbar for controlling the docking positions and I'll hopefully remember which one's which. So for this one, I want transmitter. I want to put it in the third position and I want to run it with this so that I know that the third position is for the third dock. So I can do this and control it remotely. Yeah. Ah, awesome. Since that's done, what time? Oh, I was hoping it was going to be daylight. We'll leave that out of the way for the moment. How soon is daytime? Can't really tell from the night. It seems like we're right in the middle of it. But I think we should be able to tell this way. Terminal, solar. Do, 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 do. Time of your location. So because of the way the light shows through the voxels, the solar panel script can't quite work out what time of day it is because right now the solar panels are receiving full on power. So it thinks it's dawn, but it's still a fair ways off. Well, seeing as we are waiting, it was suggested to me that I make a few more of these vents around here. And I think I might end up doing something like that. A few people also pointed out that they sh thought I should use the diagonal vents and I can't really have them within diagonal armor slopes because it'll end up with... Oh, actually it may not. Huh. I was thinking it would end up with me having the armor slopes right up against this crossbeam, which I didn't want, but... Because there's a little bit of rock there, it wouldn't actually do that. So I may try this... I'm going to try a new, a different design out. I do like the one that I had there, but... Can't hurt to try a different style as well. If we go with this... And... That... Now... What if... We have... Another... Light armor slope there and there. So with these diagonal windows, I could either put it out here, which may work. I think that way would look better. Or I could actually inset it behind these. Let's have a look. Okay. So that's one option. Ugh. Yeah, I don't... I, I don't like this option. Definitely don't like this option. It's just this bit looks all a bit ridiculous. Um, I wonder if you use these. No, I think I think I know why this looks a bit ridiculous. I think it's because of these side bits here being a full block in width. I think it looked better with the other design because they weren't that full width. 
there is something I do want to try with the other design. And that is replacing the vents, the flat vents, with diagonal vents. As the main thing I was complaining about with the vent was the fact that it looked too flat. And the diagonals might resolve that. Actually, I think that even looks more strange. <laughs> uh, can't win. Cannot win. Ooh, actually... We could try having the vent flat like this and recessed. No. The trouble with having it recessed like this is that from so many angles you don't see the vents, so it just looks like this weird armoured outcropping, which I don't like. Sadly, I think the original design is the best that I'm going to come up with. So we'll go back to that. But, even though I've stuck with this, it was probably worthwhile experimenting on that. As I might have come up with something I was happier with. And if I am going to put things like this around the base, I should probably find something I am very happy with. Alright, I'm going to grind this away, and then hopefully we'll be ready to go for morning. Totally forgot that I had this. Let's use this to grind this away. It'll be much, much easier. So I don't know how many of you guys saw it, and the nugget just reminded me of it, but on Reddit recently, Marek actually commented that they are fixing the welder range for small grid welders. So the nugget may actually become a functional ship once that release, once that fix gets released. It, unfortunately, we weren't given any indication of when that might come, but... It certainly is very reassuring to know that we are going to get functional small grid welders back at some point. So I'm very happy about that and very happy about the potential of the nugget being useful. And oh, 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 not just the nugget. I totally, ah, oh, didn't even think about that until just now. Not just the nugget being useful, but instead of me having to cobble together some very weird and Frankenstein's monsterish trailer for the goose, I might be able to make a goose printer with small grid welders that are actually working. Oh, that would be amazing. That would be so cool, because we could print things like sandbags and drop them off at places. If that comes back and I haven't already done something like this, sorry, when the welders get fixed and I haven't already done something like this, I think it could be amazingly cool to build a printer on a goose trailer that can make sandbags and has an articulated arm to pick them up off the, sand off the goose and drop them off to the side using MRM OS. Oh, that would be so cool. Oh... That's just made me so impatient for <laughs> that fix coming out now. Uh, dang. Prior to that, I was like, oh yeah, maybe it'll it'll be it'll be great when it does, because then I'll get the goose. But now I really want it now. <sighs> oh well. At least I do know it's coming. That is very very reassuring. We do have some light in the sky. Uh, do I get going now? I reckon if we're careful, we can. Let's go. Let's grab the goose and let's go mine another load of iron. In fact, before... Oh, uh, rather than me flying all over the shop, let's just remote in. And let's check the, ma the amount of ores and ingots we've got of things. So we've got a tiny bit of gold, tiny bit of platinum. We've got a decent amount of silicon. Not a huge amount of silver, but we're barely using it. We've got our iron, got our cobalt, and we got a lot of nickel. So it really is just iron. Oh, right. I can't move! I forgot something that I had done, which was turn all of these on to recharge. Now I can move. Okay. Straight across the turntable. And... Ooh. I just realized a problem with the turntable. 
I'm going to need some way to know which direction it should be facing. Oh, actually. So the reason I was thinking I needed some way to know which way it's facing is that as I drive out, if I leave the turntable as is, when I drive on, I'm going to be facing the wrong way for any of the other spots to work. So what I think I need is an automated setup to make it so that when I leave with the goose, the whole thing will spin around 180 back to its resting position. So I think we set that up now. So I'm going to set this sensor up, but I'm probably going to have to switch it off at times because I will trigger it with Igor. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go under here. I'm going to go down to where our conveyor system is. If oh, can't get through that way. Ah. I'm going to go down to where our conveyor system is. And I'm going to put a sensor down underneath the floor. And that sensor will detect small vehicles. And as it goes, as anything goes across it, it's going to send the zero command to the rotor. Before we actually place the sensor, let's pop up and I'll create a GPS marker so that I know roughly where I want to be. I think if we put it dead center here, I'm almost certainly going to be driving across it each time. So if we go K, GPS, new from current position. And I think with the sensor right here, I should be able to detect the goose as it goes across. And what I need to have is, let's show on HUD, uh, show sensor field range. Don't need it quite so big. We do need it to stick above the floor though. So I'll just drill a hole. Oh, oh, excellent. I can still control it with build vision from up there. So I think that sort of sensor field range should work. I'll hit it every time I go through. And what I think might work to avoid the problem of the goose triggering it while the trailer is still on here is if we make it so that it's triggered from the off position. I don't want to put it further forward here so that the goose could trigger it and be safely off the platform because I'm expecting at some point I will start putting things in these two bays. So that'll mean that this sensor would have to be moved at that point. So why don't we just try and fix it up properly from the beginning? So what I want to do with the base turntable control is just pass the zero command, which should send the zero to the rotor so that it moves to that position. And I don't want it to detect players. I want it to detect small ships. Okay. So it should now, if I've gotten that right, only activate once it's been activated by a small grid and then the small grid's moved out of its space. So let's check and see if I have set this up correctly by reversing into it with the goose and then reversing, then moving out of it. Let's see as I move out. Yeah! Alright, cool. So that's going to fix the turntable up for us. That's good. Hopefully I don't change my mind too many times as I go out, because then I'll have to reset the rotor position. But that was something that would have gotten in, gotten me into trouble in the future. I would have tried to park in one of these side bays and had all sorts of nightmares having to move off the turntable, turn it around and come back on. This way, it'll all be correct all of the time. Excellent. All right, let's move forward, load up the butterball, and let's head down to the mines because it is definitely daylight outside now. That's probably a little closer to the edge than I should go. Let's turn on lights because we are still a bit dark out. I'm kind of happy that it's still a bit dark out because it means I could, if I really, really push it, attempt to get two trips done in one day. 
which would be very cool and would stop us needing to mine any time for a long time, I suspect. Particularly if I go out and grab a few bits of other materials as well, not just iron. Oh dear. Got a little overexcited. Forgot what my maximum load capacity was. Oh, this is going to be interesting. I've got about 10,000 kilograms more than I should have aboard the Butterball. I was getting all carried away watching the edge of the iron ore mine and gradually moving my way around it. And completely forgot to look at my mass. And hopefully I don't cook too much of those salt panels. Come on, come on. Yep, yep, yep. Oh. Okay, let's not do that again. There's just no need for me to go so hard on each load when I've only got to travel such a short distance. It makes much more sense to make things safer and easier by taking slightly smaller loads each time. If I was flying all the way back to base, I think I'd probably take the risk to save on that extra travel time. But yeah, here, not necessary. Absolutely not necessary. One thing I was thinking about just now with the way I've set up this world, if I had a do-over, I think I would almost certainly add the Deep Oars mod. It'd be really fun, I think, to have deposits of things like iron large enough that there's a genuine benefit in setting up infrastructure so or even setting up a large grid mining base that drills out with well that drills out with pistons and rotors and large ship drills because I think that'd be fun to build but with the size of these deposits and the thickness, it's really just not efficient enough to be worth attempting. You'd end up spending so much time building the thing that you'd probably use up most of the deposit anyway, and then you'd need to move it afterwards, which really doesn't help. And I have always wanted to build one of those big, big, big mines that some people have done. I think it'd be so much fun. Plus, it could be cool to have trucks to run stuff back up to the surface if it's a long, long way down. Rather than having conveyor systems, have a sort of a carefully drilled out path that we could drive a big truck up to the surface to bring everything out of the mine and just have smaller mining ships, maybe even stuff the size of the Butterball, down deep in the mine that just docks locally and stays there permanently because the base because the mining deposit is so big. Okay, this is our last load. I think we're only about halfway through daylight hours. So there might be a chance we'll get back down here before dark. The thing that always catches me out though, and that I always forget when I'm getting excited early, is that I need to recharge the Butterball before I can come back down, and that's where the time really gets away from me. Oh, wait. Yeah, that is right. About to turn it around. Okay, let's get going. Now, I think it might be quickest to drive straight out. I'm not going to try a three point turn this time. I'm just going to drive straight forward. Yeah, 30 meters a second. Slowing down. And around the marker tree. And I think. That has got to be one of my quickest trips home, if not the quickest trip home I've ever actually made with the goose. Good to know that I'm learning, because I'm managing to do things better and better as we go. Whoa! Oh. <laughs> I can't believe I just did that. <laughs> God. How... Oh... How bad is my timing? Praising myself for learning and then I almost roll the goose. That's just shockingly bad. I don't think I could have done that so badly even if I tried. That was abhorrent. I, oh, I cannot believe I did that. Oh. Just realized a problem. 
with this sensor. Oh no, it should be fine, because it already put it at zero, so when I drive on, this isn't going to move. Aha! My sensor is smart. Unintentionally. There we go. Park. Nope. Oh. Oh wait. I need to get the butterball off before I park, because it'll be too hard to get it out if I do. Alrighty, time to test this connector. I think this is about the right side to side position and then I just need to probably stop. I think it's there. Whoa, whoa, stop. Maybe a little bit forward of there. There we go. Alright, let's try the rotation. Fingers crossed this doesn't cause an explosion. I may need to harden up the suspension so that it can actually connect here. Because I think that's probably the more sensible option than playing around with the rotor displacement. Ha! It does anyway! Yay! Lock. Alright. Keel. Okay, 5,800. Yeah, I reckon it's time to get Igor out while we wait for the butterball to recharge. See if we can... Get a bit more of this space in here welded up and ready for use. That's after all why we did these mining trips. As much as I'm getting excited about the welder range finally being fixed, or eventually being fixed, if it hadn't have been like this, we never would have had Igor, and that would have been sad. I love Igor. He's worked out so much better than I ever could have hoped. And he's the most wonky thing I've built that still works. Alright, let's check the butterball, because it's still daylight, and I reckon the butterball might be close to charged. I managed to get a whole other bay done. Let's see... Yep, charged. Let's go. Let's go grab another load of ore with the goose, because I think that's going to be very useful to get done now. <gasps> Ooh, that was close. That was way too close. Turns out that the turret... Oh, that was kind of cool. Turns out that the turret is going to get destroyed by the connector if I forget to move it out of the way. <laughs> Let's not do that. Let's not forget. Let's get going. This mining trip is going to have to be a quick one. Let's move. Roll out. Hopefully I can get... Ooh. <laughs> the sun is setting. Hopefully it'll remain bright enough for my return trip to not be completely pitch dark. As long as the sky is bright, it means there's usually enough ambient light that I can see where I'm going. And I don't have to rely on my spotlights, which would be best. Seems like I'm still getting away with no attacks lately, which is n good. Not so exciting, but it is it is allowing me to get a lot of work done. Okay, so it might be later than I thought it was when I started driving down here. Maybe we won't go for a complete load. Maybe. Although, if we're already driving back in the dark, what difference does it make? Let's get mining! Yeah, it's going to be pitch dark when I leave. Oh well. What's done is done done. It almost gives me a heart attack every time that the view goes from third person to first person because it gets so much louder. Like that. <laughs> With the drills. Freaks me out. Freaks me out. I think something's gone horribly wrong and I'm about to explode or something like that. Although the exploding would be the something going horribly wrong. Oh boy. It is properly dark now. I swear I could see the ground in the last trip. I just can barely make it out with the beams of my spotlights. <sighs> Travelling in the middle of the night. Not what I want, but I did it to myself. I see a drifting pursuant come in. I hope it won't make it all the way down here, because I do not expect my sandbags to be especially good defence against a drifting pursuant. 
Although they do normally get taken out by those ones on top of the ridge, so maybe I will be okay. But it does make me a little bit anxious. Just a little. There's a drifting pursuant that's now 5.25 kilometers away. I've been watching it for a little while and I kind of thought it would be one of those ones that would despawn. But it does not look promising. And at 5k's out, I'm not feeling supremely confident of being able to make it back to the base safely. And I am a bit torn whether I try and make a run for it in the middle of the night with it pitch black and trying to move around in those conditions, or do I make a stand here with the sandbags? Kind of feeling the making it. There, 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 there. I kind of feel that making a stand here with the sandbags might be my best idea. I mean, my best idea would have been not run down here so that I was mining at night, because then I could have run home, because it would have been daytime and I could have seen. Uh, but... <laughs> I made that mistake, and I'm going to have to live with it. Even if it loses the goose. No, the goose is not cooked. It will not get destroyed. Hopefully I am carrying my rifle so that I can at least contribute to this upcoming firefight. And the, <laughs> the really annoying part about it is, this is my last load with the butterball. I have completely filled the goose already. So I was very, very close to being able to have a comfortable run back. <sighs> well, you know, comfortable in complete darkness. Now, I've got those three there. And then the goose is sort of behind. I think I might be best trying to hold out in front of the goose. I really don't want to let them get close enough to it. I'll need to make sure that that turret on its back is on. Just to add some extra firepower if it becomes needed. I don't think I can drive up to where the other sandbags are. Which would have been better because there's more of them. I didn't exactly put a large number of them around here. But... Oh, the turret's off. So I'm just going to have to make do. And I have 204 rounds. That's something. At least. 3.2 kilometers out. I wonder if these trees would provide me any cover. Probably not. It's going to be too high. <gasps> no, it should come down to my height, shouldn't it? It's not going to fly so high that it just flies straight over us. Hmm. Probably don't want to be right next to the sandbags during this fight. Oh, I don't know what to do. <gasps> Ooh. Actually, I think I do know what to do. Where is it? Gatling turret. Control. No! Why does this happen? Why can't I can why can't I shoot with this? Oh I was gonna take control of the turret and I was gonna shoot and get the full range out of it, but it won't let me shoot. Hmm. I wonder if there's something wonky with the control. I wonder if I just go in direct. Can I control and shoot then? Oh, I can. I can. Yeah. I may be very exposed right now, but I still think it's going to be better me shooting with this because I should get the full one kilometer range out of it if I'm using it, which is a lot better than the 600 meters. Oh, <laughs> this is exciting, terrifying altogether. At least the Drifting Pursuant's a nice big target. Oh, please survive, please survive, please survive. Don't damage the goose, don't damage the goose. Or the Budwall, or me. I'm very exposed to be able to get control of this. Oh, I can't see a thing. That's very bright. Makes it very hard to see what I'm doing. I 
Once it's in range, I'm getting out of control and I'm going to let the AI do it. Oh no, it's shooting at us! Ah! Oh yeah, explosion! Oh, I think we've won. I definitely think we've won. Oh, look at that. Look at the fire. Oh, the other one's joined in too. That is awesome. Oh yeah, you are going down. Ha 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 What a victory. I don't want to follow it down too fast. Oh. oh, that makes me so happy. That makes me so happy. I was really worried that was going to end horribly, horribly, horribly for me. Phew. Uh-oh. Stinging adversary five kilometers out. No! And another drifting pursuant! Uh, no, this is not good. I don't trust myself to make it there. Uh, no. Uh, I guess we wait again, maybe, for the rest of them to come by? Don't know what else to do. Seems like there's a bigger gap between that second drifting pursuant. I wonder if it'll despawn. If I'm stuck with it attacking as well. That worked quite nicely, actually, taking control of the turret, I think. It is unfortunate that with the turret at night, the barrel flashes are so bright that I really could not see anything useful at all. I think what I might do, since I'm pretty well useless anyway, is I'm going to try and get us a more interesting perspective on this next one. I'm going to use spectator cam. Here is our stinging adversary. Shift middle mouse will make me move in exactly the same direction it is moving at the time I click it. Then I can move my camera around so we can see it better. And let's... Ooh, bright. Let's see how this goes. I reckon this one's going to take <laughs> so much damage so quickly. It's not going to last very long. There are a lot of turrets there. I definitely did take some fire from the Drifting Pursuant, so this one might get a couple of shots in as well, which is not good. Hopefully it just shoots against the decoys. 2.7Ks away. Alright, got a little while to wait. Um, surely we should be firing by now. Must be close. Must be getting very, very close. Oh no, it's coming down directly on top of me. Oh, come on, take the turret, take the turret, take the turret! Oh yeah. Okay, what damage is done? You look okay. You've lost a decoy. You look okay. The goose looks... Okay! Excellent! Success! Now, have we got any more enemies coming in? No, we don't. Time to roll. Let's get a move on. Whew. That was slightly more exciting a mining trip than I had intended. I mean, I thought it would be a little bit exciting, but I thought it was going to be my driving making it exciting, not drones. I know there are those people who get a little bit upset with me when I take these sorts of risks and they uh, end with potentially damage. Although sometimes I do just get lucky. I don't know. I think sometimes you got to take these risks to have a bit of fun. 
I genuinely thought I had a pretty good chance of having a very easy trip back because I've now done this trip so many times. But it really is very difficult to position myself when it's night time like this. I don't have a clue where I am in relation to anything and I'm going to need this on. This is what I'm talking about. I genuinely don't know which way to go. If I'm going to be making this nighttime mining uh, thing that I'm going to do, I am definitely going to have to listen to everybody who suggested building lights all of the way down to the mines. I've been struggling to come up with a design that I really would like to use though. I want something that's able to put out enough light but isn't using a spotlight. So. Using small grid, I only get the 10 meter range from the interior lights. But if I use large grid, I can get 20 meters, which should give me something useful to help guide where I'm going and illuminate a bit of the terrain around it, which would be handy. But then you've got to deal with large grid batteries and large grid solar panels if you want to make it be able to run forever so it ends up being quite a large device so I am tossing up the possibility of just putting down a large grid battery then directly on top of that an interior pillar and then directly on top of the interior pillar putting an interior light which could look okay but uh, still not sold but I think if I end up doing one more night mining trip like this or once this iron ore has run out and the other place that I find it happens to be a bit difficult to navigate to, then I will absolutely be doing that. Ah, okay, here we go. Yeah, okay. Phew. Not too many wrong turns, thankfully. Hopefully I've gotten enough of a run up. I'm not sure that I have. Come on, butterball, you can... Give us that extra kick. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. All right, good. All right, uh, uh, off. I was shooting at wreckage. As exciting as a high speed chase using the goose might be, I'm not that much of an adrenaline junkie in Space Engineers. I like a little bit of a thrill, but definitely don't want that. Considering it was one of the drifting pursuants that I had to take on initially, I'd say that the sandbags performed admirably out there. I don't think I... <laughs> it wouldn't surprise me if I didn't even hit anything. <sighs> if every single one of my shots actually missed the thing. I am very happy with how this turntable has worked out. As... I, despite a little bit of practice, have not gotten any better at doing three-point turns with a semi-trailer. I mean, it's hard enough usually for me to get off the turntable where I need to be so I can lock to that connector. Although I think this time it should work a bit better because I haven't ended up pushed right up against one of the railings, which kept happening before and made it very, very difficult to get the goose off. To get the goose off the turntable. Well... That was a bit of excitement and some very useful mining expeditions that were performed. The butterball's in its spot. Let's see how much iron we have now because I reckon there's a pretty good chance that we have enough iron ore for everything now. Holy moly. 1.7 million kilograms. Nice. Very, very nice. I think we're good. I think we're pretty good. How much ammo have we built up now? 205. I'll leave it going for a bit longer. Ooh, and we got another 4,000 steel plates. Yeah, nice. That should allow Igor to pretty much finish up all of the floor in the Goose's hangar bay. So then we can start... <gasps> oh, yes. Then we can start taking the fight to them again. Oh, no. I gotta finish the roof first. I will finish the roof of the goose's parking spot and the bit joining. Then, I think we take a break from this constructive behavior. 
and start doing something destructive. Haven't decided what that destructive thing is yet. But whatever it is, it'll be fun. So there's that and plenty more to come. So I'll see you then.